up on all of our um, different platforms here. We're going live on LinkedIn. We're going live on YouTube. We're going live on Twitter. Uh, looks like things are okay there, which is great. Let me pull up on LinkedIn. YouTube's doing good. This is good. It's always nice when it works. Um, we've tried to go live a couple times from the floor. Uh, this week that has been challenging um, because of bandwidth as you would might imagine when there are 65,000 people uh, kicking it in the same place um, that makes it really really tricky <laughs> really really tricky to keep uh, to keep sufficient bandwidth going so um, Dr. Vogel's keynote just um, finished up a little bit early which was interesting I'm just trying to make sure that we are in fact going live on uh, LinkedIn right now I look at my streaming settings, it should be LinkedIn sending data. Uh, still sending data. So we're just coming back now up on a couple platforms, so just give it a second. Uh, bear with me here. Um, I know monitoring on Twitter, there's a ton of people who are kind of wondering what is going on, right? Um, so let's answer that. Let's, let's dive into that. Uh, let's see if LinkedIn's coming up. I got a good feed through to Twitter. I got a good three feed through to YouTube. Uh, LinkedIn is having some challenges this morning. Um, which, you know, that happens too, right? So let's see here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So first things first. Uh, you know, we'll hope LinkedIn kicks. Uh, kicks in here in a second. Let's see if we can switch it. And then come back on. Just trying to reboot the LinkedIn piece of the stream. Um, yeah, first big shock right out of the gate. Uh, not so much um, shock is a lack of shock, or shock that there wasn't anything announced. Um, so uh, Dr. Vogel's normally traditionally for the last eight, seven reinvents at the end of his keynote will come out and tell us who's playing um, uh, reinvent uh, or replay tonight, and he didn't this time. So he has an Osdorp posse, um, and Osdorp's a city in the uh, in Netherlands, um, or a neighborhood in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, and so he had an uh, Osdorp posse shirt on, which could mean that they're there, but I don't think they're big enough for uh, replay um, standard-wise. So uh, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, so it doesn't look like LinkedIn's coming in, so we're here on Periscope, we're here on YouTube. Um, let me know what you think. Hit me up uh, in, uh, tag me directly at MarkNCA um, or at trend micro um, would love to uh, handle your questions um, directly uh, you know so let me let me know what you think we're gonna be talking and uh, doing a quick recap of what happened <laughs> of Werner's keynote so the first thing that's on most people's minds right out of the gate um, and just as a heads up AWS will be going live on twitch um, twitch.tv slash AWS they're probably gonna go on uh, LinkedIn as well if it works for them uh, it seems like LinkedIn lives having some challenges this morning um, with an official recap of the keynote. Now, because there was no service launches, which is one of the big things we'll talk about in a second, um, I'm not sure what Ian and the gang are going to do, but you should be checking out the Launchpad all day, Twitch TV, uh, twitch.tv slash AWS. Um, they are recapping a bunch of stuff. They have a lot, a lot of the product managers, a lot of the... Um, people uh, who actually build the stuff on uh, talking about it and I'm sure they're gonna mention the keynote uh, as well so uh, first things you know we we covered the first thing first which is the no replay announcement which is honestly shocking surprising and now it's like okay well who's gonna be there is and is there gonna be a big act again or have they totally um, done a completely different thing because there is AWS intersect uh, this weekend which is a music festival uh, in the replay facilities but Foo Fighters are headlining uh, Brandy Carlisle, Neutral Milk Hotel, um, Beck, a whole bunch of people. It's a separate ticket. Replays included with your full conference pass. Um, so uh, definitely worth checking out, but now a little bit of mystery, a uh, little bit of frustration, I think, from people in general. Um, but one of the, the things that came up in the conversation when we were uh, live tweeting this, when I was talking to folks online on Twitter, um, was that the lack of announcements. So Werner highlighted uh, one only one um, actual new service announcement, I think, uh, which was the Nitro Enclaves piece uh, that came out uh, the other day. Um, but other than that, and that was in Steve Schmidt's keynote as well, I tweeted that out again, at Mark NCA, M-A-R-K-N-C-A, if you want to see the tweets from that. Trend Micro has been uh, retweeting a bunch of those out as well. Um, but there was no announcements in Werner's keynote, and I think uh, that split a lot of people. A lot of people were waiting for new, new stuff. So let me run down where new stuff has been announced this uh, year for reInvent. So this year we had a bigger than ever pre-invent 
phase, so two weeks before um, a reInvent, so the last two weeks in November, we started getting a bunch of announcements from AWS on the AWS What's New page on the AWS blog. Bunch of features, a bunch of new services launched there. So we had more than normal um, rolling out there. And then we had um, Monday Night Live, or we had Deep Composer in Midnight Madness. We had Monday Night Live that didn't have any announcements. We had um, Andy Jassy's keynote, which had a few announcements. But there's also been, and unfortunately they were some, somewhat mislabeled in my opinion, a bunch of leadership sessions. So every theme, every code, so DOP for DevOps, um, SEC for security, um, AR, C, yeah, ARC for architecture. Um, every one of these had a 201-L, uh, dash L leadership session. Now it was a 200 level, so a lot of longtime builders just kind of ignored it because they don't go to 200 level sessions, they go to three and 400s. But the leadership sessions normally featured um, that key executive or representative of that theme. So for the security one, it was Steven Schmidt, the CISO of AWS. And in those leadership sessions, they talked about um, the overview of what's going on with um, that area of concern. So in security, um, uh, Steven gave a, a, a high level, like this is what AWS focuses on, this is the biggest problems they hear from customers. But in those 201-L sessions, they also made a bunch of service announcements. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Some of them made it to the AWS blog. Some of them just made it to the What's New page. Some of them uh, you know, haven't really bubbled up online yet. I know the AWS team is extremely busy behind the scenes. So there are a bunch of... Um, uh, sessions that have been uh, popping up on the YouTube. AWS made a new YouTube channel, um, AWS Events, that has all of these uh, videos from reInvent. Uh, the keynotes are on the main AWS or Amazon Web Services YouTube channel, but the AWS Events channel has all of these uh, videos from reInvent popping up. Um, and it may not be new, I just never had seen it before. Um, so definitely worth a subscribe over there. So that's where a bunch of the announcements went, which comes back to Werner's keynote today. Um, the way Werner's keynote was, was it it was um, similar. He's been getting closer and closer to this for the last couple of years with less and less announcements, talking about really how you need to adjust building. So the overall theme was you need to look at how you build and shift that to drive um, better results. And the, the sort of implicit thing was the AWS cloud provides you a ton of tools that will allow you to build better. Okay, um, and better means better business outcomes, uh, less expensive, highly performant, opening of new possibilities, things like that. And I'm just looking at my notes here. The way we started off um, was with a deep dive into the Nitro system. Now, the Nitro system is not something that you can find in the AWS Service Console. It is a series of technologies underneath that AWS has built to make their operations more efficient and more secure and enable new innovation. Now, they started talking about it about two years ago, um, really went in depth last year, uh, and then today. Today, again, they started re referencing it, why it's enabled a whole bunch of new instance types, why it's enabled a whole bunch of new um, technologies. And what I thought was really interesting today was Dr. Vogels um, took that and turned it into an opportunity to show how AWS broke up a monolith, which was the Zen hypervisor that they had forked from the open source version, um, and created a whole series of essentially microservices with Nitro, um, but also walking through that transformational process. And that was sort of the first hit on the theme of you can't take traditional approaches when you have a whole bunch of new tools available to you. Um, and I think you know people are complaining about that, like, hey, there's no new announcements. I find that far more important because I continue to talk to organizations around the world who are trying to build software and solutions just like they did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And you know what? It'll work. They can, you can still build a successful solution that way, but it's going to take longer. It's going to cost way more money. And it's not going to be nearly as optimized or as effective as it could be. And that was really the start of the theme. Um, as part of that, there was a really nice little sort of call out on security. I'd commented that Werner was surprised when people really cheered the fact that they, he was highlighting a, a bunch of security stuff. But it was really um, the security uh, in the cloud, right? The things that AWS has been building into their services to help us um, actually build on top of a far more secure platform. And they've taken it to absolutely amazing extents. Um, and the good news is we don't have to worry about it. Just it shows up and we get the benefit of it. Now, if you're interested, you can dive in more. Um, I tweeted out a link um, of, to last year's um, talk on Nitro. Um, I'm not sure if there was anything in the catalog this year, but I'll take a look and I'll, I'll push that out on trend channels uh, in my own later. Um, but that was a, another highlight. And then uh, the keynote kind of shifted into um, 
into uh, different areas where uh, it was. Um, sorry, I'm just seeing an, a note where um, people are telling me uh, the, the the headliner. So let me double check this uh, to make sure it's public um, and not uh, private information. Uh, but the, um, the the keynote switched into a little bit more. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay, let me just double check this email here. Um, so the, um, the the keynote switched into more of this building. How do you work with it? How do you move forward? Um, and it started to show some really great examples about... Uh, I'm just looking for the replay party on the website right now. Uh, Builders Fair, uh, Keynotes, The Quad, Replay Transportation. Um, so the... Uh, this idea of taking the same things that you've always done and trying to do it in the cloud, um, I find people don't pay nearly as much attention as they should to it because, uh, you know, it works if they, um, if they, uh, if they just move it over. I'm sorry for distracting. I was just reading the, the replay on the website officially right now, as they say, we welcome a Grammy nominated performer who promises to bring a fresh new sound to the biggest party in tech while maintaining the vibe uh, you know and love. Obviously, Replay Party is the number one thing that we're all worried about today. Um, but uh, I'll see. Uh, hopefully, someone's going to tell me whether or not I can officially tell you who's coming uh, because I'm pretty sure I know the artist who's coming. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, let me just double check on Twitter to see if it's been released on Twitter. Um, so the, the this theme of, you know, you need to be building differently. Um, you need to be working. Um, it's super important, but I think a lot of people don't believe uh, or don't think it's nearly as important um, but it's critical to, to digital transformation and that echoes Andy's theme as well and where uh, Werner illustrated that in the um, example of Nitro he went on further to show how Amazon, um, he highlighted the challenges around um, industrial and manufacturing cases where there's just not enough data. And there was a really interesting thing that I've talked about before in a number of my security talks. I handled it South by Southwest last year, um, where uh, physical aspects are purchased on a completely different life cycle than the digital ones. So if you're building a, a manufacturing plant out or in healthcare, same kind of thing. So healthcare, if you buy an MRI machine, the expected lifetime is seven to 10 years. Um, in a factory, uh, the expected lifetime of a factory robot, which Trend Micro Research did a really cool um, research paper two years ago on industrial um, robot arms. Um, the expected lifetime is uh, 11 years, I think. Uh, same with a uh, truck. Uh, you're expecting 10 years out of a, out of a tractor trailer. Um, these are completely different timelines where we see a um, new threat every 0.3 seconds, I think. Um, a new mutation or a new variant on malware every 0.3 seconds. So 0.3 seconds versus uh, a decade. These are completely different alignments. And what Werner called out this morning was that, um, not the security side of that, but the data side. You're not getting nearly the amount of data that you could out of these um, manufacturing scenarios. So he used Amazon, not AWS, but Amazon, you know, the big Amazon.com seller, as an example of how they've modernized um, all of their um, uh, infrastructure in order to generate data to make better decisions. Now, I used a horrible example of a Nick Cage sequence face pillow, which was on screen for way too long, in my opinion. Um, but basically, what he did was talking about how they have uh, invested in automating um, their uh, warehouse and their logistics infrastructure, but also generating data out of it in order to focus that automation and drive that automation forward. And I think that's a really important thing. Then we heard that echoed by um, uh, the CIO or uh, one of the high level execs from. Um, from Volkswagen, uh, which was really, really uh, important to kind of get that practical, like, hey, we've taken our multi, our brand portfolio and uh, done the same kind of thing to get better information, to get better data, to drive things forward. And I think that's where um, that's a really good use case to highlight the fact that you have to shift how you think about these things. Um, and even act, echoing back to earlier in the keynote where uh, Werner talked about how for EBS, the elastic block store, or the disks attached to your EC2 instances, basically, um, at least that's how you think of them, logically disks, is that it's really millions of tiny databases in the back end. And that's not something that you would have traditionally come up with as a developer uh, to, a sol uh, to solve that problem. Um, and that was that theme echoing out, was that if you start to look at new new um, development technologies, if you're looking at new um, 
possibilities, uh, new architectures, you start to get really um, interesting solutions, especially when you realize that you don't have capacity constraints because you're dealing in the AWS cloud. And a one way for you to take advantage of that, so for you to take advantage of that at home, is this new launch of the Amazon Builders Library. That was the one new thing uh, Werner announced, even though it's just a collection of documents and white papers from AWS engineers talking about how they've built the back end of the AWS cloud, but it gives you a lot of examples to pull from on how to do uh, like proper best practices or architectures for various um, workflows. So instead of recreating it yourself, you can learn from somebody else. And that's going to be a really, really powerful resource for everybody moving forward. Um, and, and that really closed out the keynote was the, the IoT side of things um, was really, uh, you know, just talking about um, how you need to shift uh, what you're doing. Um, and that's super, super important. Um, but again, you know, the pushback, well, what I thought was truly interesting was the pushback from people on Twitter, uh, and I'm just searching my email here to make sure that I get, because uh, again, I keep getting pinged in the background, which is awesome, uh, that everybody's like, hey, it's this person, it's this person, it's this artist, I don't want to make an announcement telling you who it is uh, without actually uh, being able to give you the reference, because I believe there was an email from AWS that told us all who this was, but of course we didn't really listen. So. Um, anyway, back to that whole point was that, you know, people wanted features and toys, and I get that, but there's been a ton of them. Uh, I think it's really good for Werner, who's in such a unique position as a technology leader, as a longtime technologist, um, the, you know, the, the technology heart of the biggest cloud on the planet, to put a stake in the ground and say, you guys really need to start thinking differently, because you're going to start to come up with a more creative solution, more innovative solution that will actually help move your business forward. So while some people were disappointed, I was extremely pleased to see this, uh, and if you watched my talks, I gave two talks here uh, at AWS reInvent this year. One DLP 204-S with a great customer and good friend Jason Craddock from Pivot, um, talking about his transformational journey, how he and his team moved from a very traditional environment into a modern um, you know, cloud native one. Um, in that talk, I mentioned the cloud adoption framework, the well-architected framework, modern application design principles from AWS, and I mentioned them again in uh, the talk I gave on my own, SEC 204, um, which was you know very much like, hey, these are the things that are out there about talking about building differently, about building well, because if you start to think about creative solutions, you need to think about security differently, but you can actually drive some really phenomenal outcomes um, instead of just building the same old thing over and over again. So don't be disappointed. Watch the keynote. It's absolutely uh, worth it. Today here at reInvent is the last day for uh, the Expo Hall. Um, it is the last day for new sessions. Um, tonight, obviously, we have um, uh, the replay party, which is crazy. There is still content tomorrow, though, and I think that's really important. If you're on site, there's still content tomorrow. Um, there are uh, the Spotlight Labs, the Hands-On Labs. Uh, you can still go write certification exams. There is also um, a bunch of replayed sessions, so a bunch of repeat sessions happen in the morning. It is a great way to get into some of the more popular sessions that you couldn't get into earlier this week. But, of course, we're here for today, for Thursday. Um, the Expo Hall is still open for the majority of the day. If you're here, come on, swing by. Hit up the Trend Micro booth at uh, 2020 in the Venetian. We've got a ton of people on site um, doing some real demos, some real work in the booth to show you um, how you can start to think about security different to match the way that you're thinking about building uh, differently. So uh, again, really interesting and fascinating keynote, but also one of those ones that you kind of got to sit on um, because when it's all new announcements, you can just look at it and go like, oh, look at all this great new stuff. We get to play with it. How cool is this? When it's a um, cultural change announcement, when it's a call to action um, to start uh, and accelerate digital transformation within your organization, it really does take a little bit uh, you got to think sit on it let it stew uh, let it kind of percolate in the background and then you come on go yeah no we need to make some significant changes as always I'm here to chat you up uh, talk to you if you want um, let me know hit me up online at mark NCA uh, or at trend micro um, we've been trying to help bring you in from uh, from afar to uh, what's going on here at reInvent um, we are at the tail end of the week which is nice it's been crazy it's been awesome uh, tons of fun can't believe 65,000 people here on the ground um, um, but there is a lot to discuss uh, for the rest of the next few weeks for moving into 2020. Uh, you need to be modernizing the way you think about this stuff as well as modernizing your tech stack. Hopefully, uh, I can help uh, educate and highlight the way. Hopefully, Trend Micro's technology can help you secure the way forward. Um, let us know. 